Now some isotopes are stable and other isotopes are not stable. So if they're not stable, it means that they decay. They break apart and form other types of elements. So let's have a look now at what determines whether an isotope is stable or not and some techniques that we can use to predict whether an isotope is going to be stable or not. So what we have over here is a diagram which has the number of protons along the bottom and up this axis is the number of neutrons. Now you can see for low mass isotopes such as say helium. In helium remember we've got two neutrons and two protons. You can see the stable isotopes for helium lie along this line here where z is equal to the n. The number of neutrons is equal to the number of protons. So this is the z, this is the n. And that's because to have a stable isotope for these low mass ones, the strong nuclear force with the two protons and the two neutrons is enough to overcome that repulsive electrostatic force. And so to have a stable isotope, we have Z is equal to N for low masses. Now, as we get heavier and heavier, we get larger and larger nuclei with more and more protons in them. So, here's a heavy one. Now, all of these protons have the repulsive electrostatic force between them. They also have the attractive strong nuclear force. And so we've got lots of neutrons in here. Now the problem is that the range of this strong nuclear force is not quite the same as the size of the nucleus. So the strong nuclear force is limited to one Fermi or one femtometer. And as we get up into this region of the graph up here, our nuclear radii are getting a bit bigger than that. So our strong nuclear force is limited to part of the nucleus in here. So that means that the strong nuclear force, the attractive force, is only affecting part of the nucleus for this proton, say, whereas that electrostatic repulsion is coming from everywhere. So that means that inside this part of the nucleus, we need more neutrons than protons in order to make that nuclear force stronger than the electrostatic repulsion. So as we get up into this part of the curve, we need more need more neutrons than protons. And this actually limits the size to which we can have stable nuclei because at some point this electrostatic repulsion is going to overcome that strong nuclear force. So you can see that on this graph here, the colors refer to the half-life. So a really stable nuclei or isotope is not going to decay. So it's colored black like this. So you can see the kind of trend that they follow. And then the unstable ones are these blue ones. They have a very short half-life. If you manage to construct an isotope with this nucleus here, it's only going to stay together for a matter of seconds and then it's going to decay. So it's not very stable. So on Earth, we don't actually get anything heavier than uranium, which is 92 and is this one up, up here. That's because beyond this, the half-lives are so short that all the isotopes with these atomic numbers have decayed because they are unstable.